I like tarot cards. Every time a new one is revealed, I cross my arms and nod my head knowingly. Yay. Electric Revive Room, I'll say. Knowing we're the five versions. We've had five versions of him and only one's ever been used. Like, come on. I think the concept's neat, but on a, and on a pure coolness scale, I would place tarot cards on the decidedly ice chill part of the scale. I hadn't given these cards as a concept much thought and would probably have never actually gone much deeper beyond they're all right. Uh, if it weren't for the recent announcement of some cards that are coming up in the near future. Hydragon EX and Flygon EX both turn some heads until people realize that their super awesome spread attacks, uh, you, you just couldn't use them. They wouldn't do anything uh, to other uh, Terra Pokemon and their stock portfolio just immediately dove into the red. Just, it's over. No, like It's over. It's, just, it's done. Um, and when I saw this, it made me, um, you know, go back and, and reconsider what do Terra Pokemon actually do? Like from a gameplay standpoint. So, so I hit the books and, you know, tried to determine if, if Terra cards as a rule box are actually like any good or, you know, at the very least, like at, at least interesting. Here's a few facts that you should understand. Terra Pokemon are all two prizers. Uh, they're all EXs, and they have a custom rule box which states, As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon from attacks, both yours and your opponent's. Although the main purpose of terrestrialization in the video game is to shift the Pokemon's type or increase the power of one of its usual typings, the card game's first Terra Pokemon did not change types at all. Uh, and with all of the Terra cards released in the first two Scarlet and Violet expansions, they just retained their normal typings. They were just the same. They effectively just had the bench protection. Uh, the streak ended with Obsidian Flames, and most of the cards released since then have altered types. And the website calls these, like, type-shifted Terras, but the, the game doesn't care about that, so... Eh. When a Terra Pokemon card does change its type, it will keep the energy requirement that the Pokemon would have used normally. So, for example, the iconic Dark-type Charizard still needs fire energy to attack. This is arguably a downside to using one of these uh, Pokemon because energy acceleration usually only works, or not usually, often uh, only works on Pokemon that are the same type as the energy that it is accelerating. Uh, however, there are some cases where the new typing may be useful, as the card's unusual typing could allow for them to be searched by or activate cards they wouldn't normally be able to use. Unfortunately, this mismatch is it's almost never beneficial, and the Pokemon would probably be better off committing to one type or another, as there are virtually no cards that actually want a mismatch, a mis bleh, that actually want a mismatch between a Pokemon's type and its attack cost. There is a subcategory of Terra Pokemon that aren't labeled as such, and these are stellar Pokemon. So these are meant to represent the same mechanic from the games, but in the games, these Pokemon have no weakness, which the card game decides to ignore. And instead, they have attacks that require at least three different energy types to use, and these attacks are they're pretty good. <laughs> uh, there are a handful of acceleration options that have been added to help these Pokemon, but, but there is a major problem. They aren't exclusive to these energy-hungry cards, which means you can use them for non-stellar Terras or even just non-Terra cards in general who don't have absurd energy costs and now could just basically set up for way less effort. The, uh, you know, the unique uh, moves, which they're named after gemstones in case you're curious. You ever wonder what the hell a Laminar is? Um, uh, they're based on gemstones. Um, these attacks are really good. And sometimes, like, some of them are really cool, like, and actually, you know, like, insane. Uh, but in a format where every deck has, you know, just a freak of the week just lunging across the table to just attack you as soon as it's possible, these moves just don't, they just take up too much effort. Like, and the effects of the moves themselves, while cool, usually aren't worth the price. Um, and they can't beat all of those cards whose one attack is like, oh yeah, uh, if you meet this requirement, you do five gazillion damage and just destroy everything on the other side of the field. All right. It's a bad look when only one of the first batch of Stellar Terras uh, sees any use, and it's not even, it doesn't even use its special attack most of the time. It usually just uses the attack that needs a single double colorless attachment. Like, come on, come on, man. You know, it's still early in, um, in the uh, Stellar Cards life cycle, I'm sure we'll get a million more and a bunch of support for them. It's hard to tell where we're going to go with this, but, you know, we'll see if, if how they do in the future. It's too early to tell. But, anyway, moving on. Cards don't exist in a vacuum, and it would be unfair to write off Terras without looking at the tools they bring with them. Uh, there's a handful of cards that interact specifically and exclusively with Terra Pokemon, and some of these actually do enable some cool stuff. 
Um, like, you know, there's some cool stuff in there, but they don't necessarily do anything that could like only be done with Terras. We're start. We're, I mean, we've already started to see the anti-Terra cards, uh, but the archetype is, you know, usually made better by these tools. Uh, we've actually had a very slow drip feed of Terra support for like the first six or seven or whatever handful of Scarlet and Violet sets, and we're only now starting to see some really good stuff. Uh, previous cards with labels changed the way the game was played intrinsically. Uh, for example, uh, Ultra Beasts they didn't have a rule box, but they had thematic attacks they, with the vast majority of the cards involving prize cards. Uh, GX and V-Stars, they were good because they had a unique ability or move that can only be used once. Radiant and Prisms had limits on their uses in the deck. All of these changed the dynamic of the game with their unique functions and interactions with cards that specifically worked with them. And they could be played around in a way that you couldn't with normal, you know, cards that didn't have these mechanics. Terra Pokemon could have their attacks or abilities placed on any other card and it would be hard to tell that they were from a Terra card. Which leaves the only unique mechanic that Terra Pokemon bring with them to the forefront and it's one that I think may just straight up be detrimental to the game as a whole. The only thing that Terra Pokemon do, no matter what, is block damage to themselves while on the bench, using their previously mentioned rule box. This is a very weird decision. And it, it doesn't really have anything to do with the mechanics from the games. If anybody watching this video knows why that is, what the, what the bench protection is supposed to represent, let me know, because I, I have no idea. Uh, the problem with bench protection as a rule box, or at least bench protection that only works on itself, is that since it's always on a two prizer that will always have like a decent amount of health, it was never at risk of being sniped while in the back. And because of this, nobody has, has ever sleeved up a Terra Pokemon and gone, oh man, I want to use this card because it it's protected while it's on the bench. No, no one does that. If you have vulnerable pieces in your bench, then you want to get something that protects the whole bench. You know, we've got a bunch of cards to do that, but since your Terra Pokemon only protect themselves, if you've set up a whole bench barrier and you also have a Terra card, it's redundant. You, it's, it's not double protected, You just it's just redundant. Also, since Terra Pokemon are never support based, they are all attackers with two exceptions, and one of them doesn't count. Uh, you shouldn't really have your Terras on the bench, like, at all. Um, which is weird that they have the barrier? Like, this means that a good chunk of cards in the game are just randomly protected from any spread or snipe builds. Which, although, you know, it's not common right now, but we can see some of it coming in, that's what I was talking about. But this, this is weird, because it just invalidates or, like, significantly weakens these potential alternate play styles, you know, that aim to attack the bench instead of your active Pokemon. But instead of being a check or a counter to these options that, that is played deliberately, it instead makes these potentially fun cards just, just not work, like in a handful of matchups for just seemingly no reason. You know, because the game obviously has skewed matchups. You've got your, your typings, your single and double prizes, your tank decks, your uncapped damage decks, the evolution decks, the basic decks. There's all of these things that can make the matchup favorable for one side. And these are usually because of the inherent way that these decks work. A rule box that simply says, no, uh with no counterplay, <laughs> because you can't bypass rule box effects right now. Uh, it excludes these cards seemingly on accident. Like, what was the point of this? To all of my goldfish in the audience, if you remember, I just mentioned a that there is one supportive Terra card, and it is Tear Mask Ogre Pond, and it is one of the most played Terras in the format, and it offers both energy acceleration and draw power, which no other Terra does. Charizard doesn't count, Fortress doesn't count, get off my back. It is the only Terra Pokemon card that should realistically never be in the active spot. Its attack isn't that good. And, and most Terra Pokemon don't have abilities, which almost makes sense because the repeal is like their mismatched types and attacks, and that doesn't really apply to abilities. But but Ogre Pond, all of its three of its cards are actually not terrible. But the main one that sees use other than Teal Mask is Cornerstone or whatever it's called, and that's because of an ability. It doesn't care about the Terra. Theoretically, this one's fine. Like it's I guess it's immune from the bench and it's immune when it's in the active. I guess uh, Ogre Pond has some interesting cards, but none of them have much to gain. From, from being a Terra, other than the corner somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond is in a bizarre situation since it's the only supportive Terra that's actually good, um, which makes it even stranger that these cards are designed to both want to be in the active spot to attack, while also wanting to be on the bench to use their bench barrier. Like, which is it? Despite everything mentioned here, I do still like terrestrialized Pokemon cards, and I gleefully kick my little feet whenever a new one's announced. 
Uh, shaking up the usual typings and having a different attack cost from the cards type is a genuinely cool idea. And it's been done before. Technically. Kind of. But this is a fresh take on it. Having Pokemon be able to interact with cards they normally would have no business using is also very cool. Matchups, which normally have been skewed by typing, now function very differently. Players are building grass attackers to hit Charizard, and that's cool. It's confusing, though, as like what it's actually trying to do, because it seemingly just has no overlapping theme or a shared mechanic, and then as the game progresses and we free fall into that wonderful period where the card game is just out of official video game material to adapt and it just starts free balling and improvising, uh, we may see some serious shakeups to make the rule box more fun, but like, man, I don't know what this, what these things are supposed to do. <laughs> uh, previous cards with labeled, I don't know, what do you call this? I don't know, I keep seeing different names, like, label, labels. Uh, previous labeled cards, that's not right, hmm. type as the energy that it is accelerating. So dark patch, uh, it's a bad look, you know, when like one of the first, or the, the only thing that Terra Pokemon, oh no, I shouldn't read that. It is the only Terramon that, sh oh, I don't like that. Uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond is in a bizarre situation as the only supportive Terra, and, and it's a really good one. Or, 